Okay guys, welcome to the FX Street webinar. Uh, my name is Ian Coleman, going to be your host uh, for the next hour. Um, I'm a trader and analyst at First Trading. Uh, we offer institutional and retail traders um, FX stock indices and fixed income analysis on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, we also provide trade recommendations. Okay, We've got quite a decent uh, p l performance. If you want to look at our homepage, it's www.firstfortrading.com. The four being the number four. Um, okay, we've not done this before. Um, our calls are actually um, go live at seven o'clock in the morning. Um, we aim to hit the European Open uh, with our trade recommendations. So this is not late in the day for me, uh, but. A lot of our trades have already been uh, initiated this morning, but we're going to try and get on some uh, some new trades uh, over sort of the next uh, the next one hour period. So basically, what I look to do, or what I do do, is I break down uh, currency pairs from larger time frames all the way down uh, into um, as far as a five minute time frame to try and gain uh, decent entry. Uh, stop loss target levels. Um, another one that I prepared earlier uh, is, is Sterling Swiss. So we're just going to quickly look to the Sterling Swiss pair first. Please keep me informed whether or not flicking through these pages, uh, whether or not the cam still stays on, because these are my uh, analytical uh, charts. And sometimes when I flick through from page to page, it, it, it does drop the camera. Uh, on this um, Hotcom software, so if you guys can just uh, just keep me informed, I'd uh, I'd appreciate it. So it's Sterling Swiss. So I'm looking. First of all, I'm looking for a bias. Okay, so I'm looking. I will do show. Um, I'm looking for um, exhaustion levels. I'm looking for reversal signals. I'm looking for chart patterns. Okay, what I've got on my charts, it might look pretty complicated. It's not. Um, I've got obviously Japanese candlesticks, uh, time frames that I look at is weekly, hourly, four hourly, hourly, 50 minutes, five minutes. Um, I've got an RSI with a 50 line on it. The 50 line is actually a 15 setting. Okay, I'm looking for a bias off that 50, 50 line. So basically, if it's trading above the 50 line, then it's telling me that the bias is to the upside. Uh, below the 50 line, then the bias is to the downside. Uh, and I'm using that in all, all sorts of different time frames. Um, the I've got Ishimoku Cloud, okay, and then I've got two moving averages there. Uh, they're exponential moving averages. Uh, one's a 15, one's a 62. Uh, the reason that I use those moving averages is because I've found that even in commodities, stock indices, fixed income, and FX, they work very well as support and resistance. Okay, the 60. I'm quite fanatical about uh, Fib levels, Fibonacci levels. And Archie levels. So these moving averages uh, are basically reflect the fib levels. The, the red moving average here is a 62 EMA, which is as close to 61.8% as I can get. And then this one here, the blue one, actually hugs the price action. And that is my um, 15 EMA, which is basically a quarter of the 62 EMA. So as I break it down from the time frames from four hours to hourly, what was the 15 EMA then becomes a 62 EMA. Okay, and I'm using these for, for a bias and for support and resistance. I'm looking to take short term scouts off these off these levels as long as I know that my risk reward is good and uh, my bias is still to the upside. So yesterday or, over, or last week in fact, um, we had this we've also had this move up in, in, in Sterling Swiss. I'm looking at correlation as well. Okay, so I'm looking I look at a total of sixteen currency pairs. Um I start very early in the morning, we're at half past four. Um and I break down the, the, the different currency pairs to give me a bias. Okay, so I look at a bias saying Sterling Swiss. I'm looking at a bias with dollar Swiss to the downside, with Sterling still still having an opportunity to push lower. So I know that I've got an opportunity uh to have uh, it might only be a short term correction, but I know that I've got an opportunity to sell uh, Sterling Swiss. 
So here we actually had an at the highs we had an evening uh, evening star formation, which is a, a bearish formation. We normally look for these uh, formations at the highs or lows of trends. Obviously, an evening star or a morning star at the at the base. Or, or the um, um, Vicky would have to tell you that. To be honest, Kane, I'm not uh, I'm not quite sure. Um, so breaking it down through the time frames just quickly to show you how we got into this trade. We're obviously been in a very decent uptrend, Swiss intervention, everything else. So we've got one, two, we've got this consolidation period, and then I'm looking for this fifth leg. Okay, so I'm looking for a fifth leg uh, to ex basically towards exhaustion. Okay, so I've got, it's still bullish. We've had quite a few up weeks, um, five in a row to be precise, counting this week's price action up to now. But we can see here that we just spiked through this 261.8% level. Okay, and if we just go back to the daily chart, decent move up, correction lower towards 61.8%. So this bodes well for uh, Elliott Wave theories. Okay, we then move up, we store towards the previous high, um, which is this level here, okay, 147.69. We consolidate and then we break, okay, and we break to the upside. So then I'm looking towards 261.8%. We had this bearish formation, okay. My trigger level to sell it was just in the middle. I know it's broken higher, but I don't place my stops above the high, okay. What I have a tendency to do is I look for my trigger candle, which is this one here, because it engulfs this small, uh, this doji candle inside. Okay, and then I take the length of that candle and I place it above the high. And that actually came in, I think, at 151.13. So my my short trade has been saved. Okay, and then I break basically break it down into shorter time frames. Okay, to look for further reversal or or, or um, indecision candles. Okay, indecision candles, the candles which stay within the range of a bullish candle. So here, um, two o'clock yesterday, this four hour candle, we can see we just got consolidation inside. Okay, these are indecision candles. So I want to look for the break of the indecision candle for confirmation of this downward move. Now, risk reward is extremely good. We're looking for this level here, 147.64. Now, if it is a corrective sequence after this five wave up, then this corrective sequence should be in five waves. Okay, so we're expecting a, a decent move down towards this sort of level, 147.64. Uh, a little bounce off there, and then another push lower. Okay, we've got to remember that the sequence on the weekly could be a cycle complete. In other words, we've had this bullish move up and then we could potentially get quite a large corrective sequence down towards sort of 141.78 area. So we started the short. We then break it down into shorter time frames. Okay, just to see what sort of price action we're getting here. Remember these We've got waves within waves, okay, sequences in, within sequences, and we, we still want to be looking for these engulfing patterns, continuation patterns, okay, and exhaustion patterns to tell us when this potential large downward move is uh, is going to be exhausted. So again, we take the slip off the swing, okay. And we look to see whether or not we've got reactions. Okay, so we've got wave one, wave two didn't take the high. Okay, inside bars, bearish engulfing here, breaks through the low impulsively, consolidates around 161.8%, which is this green line here. And then we're just looking towards 261.8%. I'm going to keep my short trade. Even if we bounce up, I'm only expecting a bounce up maybe towards this cloud, okay, maybe towards one sort of 150, 25, 34 area. And then 
another impulsive move lower. So we've completed 261.8% on uh, on the weekly. We've got a half decent reversal pattern around 261.8% on the daily chart. And then we've got this shorter fib, which is actually off a 30 minute chart uh, that's dictating that we could potentially just bounce off the bottom here. Okay, so that's, like I said, one that we prepared earlier. Um, what I would like to see today, and I'm probably not going to get it, is for this candle uh, to engulf. What I think is going to happen is we're just going to pause around these levels. Okay, we spiked through on a couple of occasions. Okay, it was a decent uh, resistance level, so it's probably going to become a decent support level. And then we're going to get an inside bar. Now, as I said, a prime area to take a short now. Uh, trend, where are you? I'll just use the horizontal line, okay? Will be half of the candle formation. So when we, I've obviously just estimated that. If we then take that back to that 30 minute chart, it's coming in around this area that we talked about, okay? This 150.35 area. Note now how these moving averages have stopped acting as support, okay? They acted as support all the way up. We've got bounces off, bullish engulfing candle, move back up, um, spiking doji to the downside or inverted hammer, okay? And then a move back up, and then it breaks through, and then we push aggressively through, we're through the cloud, we're under the 50 RSI, so all of our bias, which was to the upside, has now been reversed and is now to the downside. And this level here, that we said was support, should now become resistance, okay, is lining up with our moving averages, our 15 and our 62 EMA. So for those looking uh, to short Sterling Swiss, I obviously wouldn't get him down at this sort of uh, this sort of level. I'd look for a bounce up towards 150.34 um, to generate a short. Okay, and when if it gets back up towards this sort of level, you're going to be looking for your 15 minute, five minute candle formations, and again, be looking for an engulfing pattern in those shorter time frames, or a um, an inside army candle with a confirming candle afterwards. Okay, indecision or a complete change in bias. Any questions about Sterling Swiss? We're going to see if we can jump on a Euro dollar uh, trade in this in this hour. No. Okay, let's change it over. Go down to Euro dollar. Okay, that's actually my Ishimoku chart. I'll just refresh the cam again, just in case you can't see this. So, euro dollar. Everybody is bearish at the moment. All the analysts, a good reason to be, with all the fundamentals that are, that are coming out. But I don't believe this is um, a long-term downtrend. Okay, we had a morning doji start off the bottom. This is the weekly. And then I'm expecting this to be an A, this to be a B, and this to be a C wave higher. You know, for that to be confirmed, we'd have to wait for a channel breakout of this level. So we've got to break it down into time frames again. Looking at the weekly chart, we've got one, two, and forget these. In fact, I'll take these off. Um, so it doesn't confuse us. Um, these are CQG charts, so there's, there's loads of weird and wonderful indicators that you can put on them. That one's actually an automated Elliott Wave indicator, but it can, because it's automated, it can throw you off a little bit. Um, the outlined yellow bars uh, highlight, to me, highlight me to the reversal patterns that I like to see. Okay, so we've got one, two, three, four, five down. Okay, this overshot that. As I said before in previous webinars, I'm not fanatical about Elliott Wave. What I am fanatical about is Fibonacci levels. Um, so we've got a sequence down. Morning star on the weekly. Moved up inside the Rami candle. Okay. 
and there's no reversal after this inside of army candle it broke to the low there's no reversal candle back up in the weekly chart okay it's still bearish off that off this candle here this inside of army and again as we said in that inside of army that was forming on sterling swiss that will work in all time frames um, if you go to the Arami, uh, sorry, the Marabuzo line, which is half of the net move, okay, you can notice that on the way back up, it just clipped the Marabuzo, okay, so the Marabuzo acts well as resistance. We then came down inside bar this was a little bit confusing which we also said in the um webinar a couple of weeks ago but we were still looking for this channel to hold and then we got a really good daily uh, reversal candle here off this channel and then we've had this move lower so we've got one move up and then this is a choppy corrective sequence down in the channel as far as i'm concerned and we can see this better on the on the daily chart okay impulsive move and this is corrective if we take the angles okay of these moves okay this is quite aggressive this is corrective so it's choppy as well with these inside moves as well being in three waves one two three one two three one two three one two three so these are all three wave sequences and three wave sequences normally dictate that it's a corrective sequence Okay, and then this aggressive move lower is now towards the channel base. Okay, and it's also towards 261.8% on shorter time frames. So again, we'll break it down. 240 minutes. We'll just show that daily first off the top. Okay, outside bar off the top. And then we have this move lower inside our army and then an outside bar okay so indecision outside bar and you can see here as well this move was corrective in nature okay it wasn't impulsive it didn't break out aggressively and actually for another um, webinar perhaps we do Ishimoku this was actually a, a false breakout to the upside the Zen lines weren't in order okay and price action was stuck this lagging line, which needs to be confirmed breakout, is actually stuck in, inside price action. So this breakup here had all the signals as, of, of being a, a false break to the upside. And we had this outside bar. And if we look at price action down here, engulfing, inside bar, breaks the low. Okay, inside bar, breaks the low. There's nothing to suggest that this downside is is ending apart from this channel base and 261.8 percent so we've got to be wary that we're potentially selling into the lows here and then we want to be watching price action around these lows so we get towards the base again we've got some inside fibs here which we're going to show in 60 minutes so we've got one two aggressive move down to 161.8 percent okay and then this consolidation near the channel base near 261.8 percent it can be short it can spike through the base so do we want to be selling it here well i don't i want to be building long positions from from, from this sort of level and i want indication that i'm trading on the right side of the trend so in here i've got this inside bar so again i've got this indecision okay it embraces to the upside and again, we're going to break it down into shorter time frames to see what we're really getting. So here, okay, this was the inside bar. This was your bearish engulfing candle, uh, sorry, bullish engulfing candle here, which took it up, okay. But it's looking like a, um, a potential head and shoulders formation. So again, breaking it down into short time frames, 15 minutes. So here's our 15 minute channel. We've got the move up 
consolidation of the lows, okay, a double bottom formation. That is actually the target level for the double bottom formation. So it is completed that here, but then it pushed up through. And I think what we've basically got here is a very awkward uh, head and shoulders formation with this level here being sort of a double header, if you like. This being the neckline of the reverse head and shoulders formation. And then, sorry, the shoulder line of the reverse head and shoulders formation. And then this being the, the neckline. So really, we need to have a break of this neckline to confirm. But I think we're probably going to get a little scalp in here. Not looking great on five minutes. Inside bar, three minutes, and even down onto a one minute chart, which starts to look a little bit messy. So, my rule of thumb is that I don't trade until I get a confirming candle. Um, I've actually bought small. That's my level. One. I've actually bought small at 128.53, so around, so around this level here, um, off this candle. So I looked at this candle, looked for confirmation, and I bought it on this this move up. My stop is down at 128.30. Um, would I buy it here? Well, I'm obviously not going to load up again because it's the same level. As, as I'm already in, so I'm now going to look to larger time frames to see whether or not it's worth increasing my long trade. Um, we're 22 minutes into this candle. I would need to see an outside bar, so I need to see the break of 128.62 uh, to increase my my long, and then. I want to see a break of 128.74, which is basically the neckline to increase the gain. So I'm long of one unit at 53. And I'm basically going to watch price action now um, to see whether or not um, it's worth increasing my uh, my long trade. Has anybody got any questions about euro dollar? I'll keep on flicking back to it to see what it's doing in the next 40 minutes. Like I say, I'm already long one unit. What I try to do in my personal trading account is to build up positions. So I'll have a bias. I'll trade with that bias. I'll then use breaks of chart formations to build that position, improve my uh, improve my size, but with improving my size, I'm also using money management. So if I break, um, i.e. if I break 128.75, then my average is going to be around 128.63. So I then want to be moving up my stop loss from 128.30 to back inside of this channel. So I'll still have some risk on. I just won't have as much risk on um, if I left my stop down at 128.30. What we could get here, we could get a break through the low or through today's sort of 10 o'clock low, just in a larger corrective sequence. I don't think we're going to, I think this channel is going to hold. Uh, any questions about Euro dollar? Right, so we'll keep on flicking back to it to see what price action is doing in the next 40 minutes. It's not the best time of day. Um, to be doing a, a live trading webinar, so we have to have a, a bit of tend to have a bit of consolidation before um, before the afternoon. The cable. Uh, our calls go live at seven o'clock in the morning, uh, UK time, and I find that's the best time to trade, or um, early afternoon session. So does that mean that all UK uh, bank traders are amateurs? <laughs> I 
Yes, or uh, well, one thirty onwards UK time, or um, or um, seven o'clock in the morning uh, UK time is when I try to uh, initiate uh, most of our trades. Now, before we go to cable, we're going to look at euro sterling to try and give us that uh, that bias. Okay. And euro sterling. Okay, we've got an impulsive move down, obviously with this weakness that we've had in uh, in euro. Um, this was choppy price action. We consolidated around 161.8%. Yeah, it's good. To, it's good to get a bias call. I'm, I'm actually long of euro sterling as well at the moment. Um, and again, I'm looking for hopefully it's a, you know probably a decent move up uh, in this pair after quite an aggressive move lower. As I said, I'm not I'm not a scout trader. I'm not looking for five ten ticks. I'm looking to build my um, my positions around my views. Okay, so I, I have a view of my small as as that trade hopefully builds with my with my view. Then I look to uh, I look to add in. Um, I run things overnight. I run things for hopefully days and weeks uh, if I can get uh, if I can get the, the correct entry. Um, if I get stopped out, then I've only been stopped out for small. And I still stick with that bias until that bias has been confirmed that it's completely wrong. So I'm still looking for um, reversal patterns um, around those levels. And at the moment, this week, I do think that everything's overcooked. I do think we've gone too low in euro dollar. There's some interesting levels around here in Aussie dollar. Um, cable, we've got some trend line support coming up. So I think everybody, I think this bearish run, and I'm going to also show the DAX in a minute, I think this bearish run is is, is overcooked, and I think we're at least due uh, a correction back up. So, Euro Sterling weekly chart, okay, towards 261.8%, which sits at 79.15, and then we've got this intraday, or this daily FIB level, it's coming in at 79.95. So if we put it onto the daily, okay. Again, we had a morning Doji star around 261.8%. So it's looking very bullish on the uh, on the close on Friday, and we've had this this other push move lower on on the fundamentals. Okay, so it's spiked through. Uh, 261.8%. I think today we'll be lucky to recapture all the price action from yesterday. But what we are going to get is we're going to get an inside army candle. The lows aren't going to get taken today. So again, breaking it down through time frames. And what do we have? We've got inside bars. Thanks, Kane. And then we've had this push up. Okay, so again, 60 minutes. Okay, a decent push up. Indecision candle around the resistance level, but it, was, it didn't hold. And then this pair has moved to the downside. Now, at this point, I really want to be getting down into even shorter time frames, like 15 minute charts. Okay, to be seeing where. I should be looking for support and resistance. Okay, so here we've got a double bottom. Okay, it actually dictates that it should get up towards this sort of level, but that well overextend 261.8%. Um, as you can tell, I'm quite fanatical about these fibs. So the move up, wave one, wave two, wave three, consolidation. Okay, around this 161.8% level, and then this push up um, towards 261.8%. What have we got now? 
you've got inside bars, okay, with broken lower. So I'm not looking to take a short trade. As I said, I'm not I'm not scalping. What I'm looking for because I think we're exhausted around 261.8%, heavily oversold on the one hour. Okay, I'm looking for pullbacks. So let's get back to that 15 minute chart. Okay, so I'm looking for this to be a completed um, first wave sequence. Okay, and then I want to note my fib levels, my support off my moving averages, okay, and areas of support and resistance. So here, this one's flashing out at us quite visibly. Okay, so this is our 50% level, 79.89. So I'll be looking for bullish signals around here. And this, which was the previous high, okay, this little swing high here is 61.8%. So we've got a buy zone, basically 79.89, 79.84. So we're looking for this pair to push lower, but only temporarily, to produce a decent buy signal. And again, looking to 15 minute, 5 minute chart formations around this buy zone. Uh, to get long of uh, the euro sterling. Remember, these are only my, only my opinions. This is how I look to trade, uh, how I I look to to build my analysis. And this is just breaking down now. So, with that euro sterling bias now turning to the downside, euro dollars just correcting lower. Let's just put that on to 15 minutes. Okay, so this inside bar is pushed us low. We need to watch price action around this this trend line here. Um, worst case scenario, mm -hmm. the first wave sequence is always the, the, the hardest to catch, okay? Because you will have overlapping waves, you'll have short waves, you'll have waves that overextend. Um, and it's always hard for any traders, analysts to try and pick the base. Okay, we could potentially say that this is one, this is two, this is up in three, small consolidation, and then a short five. Okay, so then we get one, two, down, well, one, two, three down in A, up in B, and then down in C. So we've got a mixture of views here. We're either going to some bullish here, which is looking like on the 15 minute candle. If we can get an engulfing candle here, it'd be a nice trade. Or, so in other words, this corrective sequence is complete to here. Or we get a larger corrective sequence, which would be A, B, C. And we move down towards that level. We've got a wolf next door. 128.71 is the high. The low, 128.40. Okay, so we've got 31 pips. We take 31 pips from the high, 128.62, 28.62 minus 31. Okay, 128.31. So just above where we projected that target level to be. Okay, sorry about that. So we've got 128.31 as potential support. And let's just watch this candle. Got another 10 minutes. Break it down then. I don't really want to be waiting 10 minutes. So we've got a five minute candle. So I'm going to place an entry level here at one, 128.50. So I've got an order to buy. At my order, 128.50. My stop at 128.27. I'm buying one unit. Three points. Okay, my order's in. Okay. So what I'm looking for, remember I'm already long at 53 anyway, so I'm just trying to do this for the uh, 
for the webinar. Um, but I'm looking for a move back towards this this Marabuzo on this short time frame. So even though it's a five minute time frame, just looking for a spike back down towards this level, this 128.53 level, uh, to get me long for the next uh, for the next move up. So everything for me on the euro dollar is looking bullish. So I'm trying to catch this low. I've got head and shoulders, double-headed shoulder beast, whatever you want to call it. Um, I've got five-way sequence up. I've got a potential three-way sequence down, and I'm probably going to be pretty lucky if I catch that now. We'll wait and see. Remember, even on these shorter time frames, it should still make um, a higher low. So if you're breaking it down into like a one-minute chart, which I try not to do too often, okay, we can see that we've not made a higher low as yet. So we've still got a chance of it moving back towards this sort of 128.50 for a, for a scalp trade and then push up. If it doesn't get down there, then obviously breaking this high is pretty good confirmation and then breaking 128.75, we should get a decent leg up. Risk reward is good. Um, the break, sorry, flicking through time frames too quickly. Okay, we want to take this break level, which is 128.73. Okay, and then we take the low which is 128.15 to the channel high, which is here, 128.62. So one, uh, okay, which is 47 pips. And then we take the break from here, 128.73, 128.73, plus 47. 129.20. So our immediate target level, move that extension off, is up here. Okay, on the break. So if we do break, we're trying to catch this move here. So on the break of 128.74, okay, we've got to stop down here. So this is our this is our risk and our reward you can see is 70 odd pips. Okay, so we've got a reward of 70 odd pips. We've got a stop of about 23 pips. Three to one risk reward. Um, so basically take all day long. Okay, any questions about why I've come to that conclusion? I think I've made it pretty clear. So, if Euro Sterling, <laughs> alright Sharon, if Euro, Euro Sterling's uh, potentially correcting lower um, and Euro Dollar looks like it's going to push to the upside, then we should be looking for bullish signals around here in Cable, uh, just using correlation of, of, of the currency pairs. Cloud support. A little bit of a way to go yet, really. Daily, this trend line support. Very close by. Okay. Two forty minutes, we're not going to get anything. Okay. Again, I'm going to get rid of the Elliott Wave sequences. But this is corrective. Okay, we've had five waves up. This is a very corrective, choppy sequence on the way down. I think it's completing now. We've got one, two, three, four, five. That's A. Very small leg up in B. And then a wave three down probably in C. So, 240 minutes, 60 minutes. Again, not giving us 
bundles of information. And you've got to remember, we're trying to catch the base here. I mean, normally in my medium term calls, I'll look for a decent reversal candle in sort of an hourly um, or a four hourly chart. Insider army, push back down. Okay, so it's nothing really great. It's flashing here. 15 minutes. extension tool okay so again remember that we've got those wave sequences so we've got those internal wave sequences going back to 240 just to show you five down to here three three up to here okay and then this one two three this fifth wave or this third wave this C wave being in five so on to 15 minutes. And again, for me, there's nothing particularly great here. Sorry. So we've got this 15 minutes. We've got one, two, inside bar, okay, moves lower. Outside bar, corrects higher to the 15 EMA, pushes lower. And like I said, there's nothing really here that wants to get me too excited to to, to buy this pair yet, apart from the correlation, okay, between uh, euro sterling and sterling dollar, and obviously euro um, euro dollar. That looks very corrective. Okay, so it's looking good. Fourth wave correction, engulfing five minute candle, and then this move lower, but again. I'm not, is it the wrong word to say? It's, it's not very sexy, um, this move at the moment. Um, inside bar, I'd have to, I'd have to watch and see if we get a dip lower just to form, okay, a longer euro dollar, um, just to form a, um, a higher low and then hopefully, um, a little, um, a little reversal candle there. So let's go back to Euro Dollar. Again, I'll just refresh the cam. It's taken my long here at 128.50. Okay, I've got my stop down here, 12813, I'm looking for the push up. So we could get, as we were saying before, we could get 123 up and then 123 down. And it break this uh, this neckline. But I'm I'm looking to build, as I said, a long position. I'm not too uh I'm not too fussed about these. I'm, tr I'm trying to scalp in, but it's my it's my long term view that's giving me um this bias to the upside. So we'll just watch a bit of price action here, see if whether or not it takes this channel base. And it has reversed that candle formation. It's actually taken out both. Okay, so we've got an easy evening star formation that's actually formed now. Um, with this bearish candle taken out the last five minutes or the last 10 minutes price action. We just see how she reacts off this channel base again now. And I don't have a tendency to close it if it breaks below and, and try and reinstate a trade here. Um, a, because I'm tight and I don't want to be paying away spreads all the time. Uh, B, because um, it might not get down to this level. It might just take this low and then and then move back up. Um, so I'm, I'm happy with my long. I'm just not happy with my long if it breaks this level 128 first. A quick look at your Australia. The Euro sterling just reacting off this fifteen minute bar. So it's gonna react for long, more likely a little dip and then and then a move up. 
and move back down, sorry. Refresh the cam again. Let's come back to that. So Euro Yen, okay. I'm going to just refresh the camera again. Euro Yen on the weekly, we've got to check, sorry for all the fibs. I have to clear all of those so we can break it all down. Okay. Channel support here. Okay, these were spikes through. They acted as support, but they were rejected. Okay, so we take the channel high to the low. Could potentially get down to this sort of level, but I don't think so. So we've got support coming in around sort of 101.95. Dailies, one, two, three, four, five. Again, to get this Elliott wave pattern there. So we've got five up. I want to see a three wave sequence lower. One, two, three. It everything screams euro dollar higher to me. Um, again, there's potential, very mild potential for, for for a dip further down. A full ABC sequence would actually take us to 101.23, which we worked out earlier. So it would be a dip below this level, but we're just getting. An inside bar again today showing that there's investor indecision down here. 60 minutes. Okay, what can I see? Well, I've only got three waves down. One, two, three. But I know that this, or I think that this is the last wave of the last wave, okay? So again, very hard to predict. Um, I'll show the 240. At the 240 minute, we get this dodgy price action around the base. 60 minutes. Okay. It could potentially be a corrective three ways, but okay, when we're taking it down to shorter time frames. I think we're just going to sort of play around with this base. Might spike just through uh, sort of the 10.30 lows and then uh, and then push back up to the upside. So I've got, I'm using correlation. So I'm using chart formations. I'm using candle formations. I'm using bias. I'm using inside and outside of Rami candles. Uh, I'm using channels. Um, I'm also using the cloud but really in sort of larger time frames to, to build my analysis to make sure that I'm not selling into exhaustion. Okay. In its rawest form, this system, and I, I do call it a system, okay, keeps you on the right side of the trade. Okay, this is Euro Yen. So while we're sort of pushing lower, um, as long as we're sort of underneath the cloud, underneath the 50 RSI, then we should be looking for reversal candles. It's only when we get, sorry, continuation pattern. So continuation pattern off here, continuation pattern off here, okay. Uh, moves up inside bearish candle here, inside the Rami, okay. Moves to the downside. And it's only really when we get a decent signal that the bias has changed, that we want to start looking at, at changing our long-term view. Like I said, it's never easy to, it's never easy, easy to catch the low. And that's why we start trading in small uh, and then building, uh, building the position. Okay, I've just been told by uh, Maud that we've got to, we've got to wrap it up. Um, any questions at all. So I'm short sterling Swiss. I'm long Euro dollar. I'm long Euro sterling. Um, dollar yen is a waste of space at the moment. It's not. It's actually three pips off the open of this month. Okay. 
and then he's halfway into the month and it's only moved three a, a total of three net points. Um, and that's why I'm sort of bypassing um, the M pairs at the moment. Dollar CAD, I think we could get a small move lower towards 99.38 before a, before a move back up. Aussie dollars towards 78.6% at the moment of the November um, November February rise, which is a prime area for um, symmetrical patterns. So I don't really want to be selling into into those lows at the moment. It's also trading around parity until that sort of moves away. Uh, the bias is 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 fairly mixed. Um, what other pair is going to tell you about quickly? Euro sterling, you know. Euro yen, you know. Uh, sterling yen. Um, I think we're going to get a bullish move up pretty soon. Um, Aussie yen, I'm short term bullish. Um, sterling Swiss lower. Euro Swiss is a waste of space. Okay, any questions at all before we uh, before we wrap it up? No, that means that everybody's either incredibly confused or has understood every, everything that I've been talking about. Hopefully it's the latter. Okay guys, just a bit of an insight into my world anyway. Um, I wish you all the best with your uh, with your trading. Um, we're offering a discounted um, one month trial for our analysis at the moment, £25 a month, uh, more than probably uh, click in the link. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks very much guys and, um, and the best of luck. Speak to you soon. Bye now.